Me lost gonna pa. The house is all tore up from the floor up, come sa. I wonder, with my little mind like that, what in the hell could have happened? Was we robbed? Me got de don, we been burgled, come sa. Madame Couillons took the sofa like that, but they didn't take that flat screen television set. Me lost gonna pa, that don't make no kind of sense, no. I'm gonna look around and see what else they took or didn't take like that. Me that boy never cleans up after himself. The only thing missing in here is self-respect. Me what's all this? This weird gradu slime everywhere like that. Tink boy, tink. The couch is gone, old shrimp stew, and nobody seen my godchild for like three days. Tatai protoplasm all over the bedroom. That's it. What if Tatai's was trying to eat me or something like that? to stop me from my whistle blowing, and they ate poor teenage instead. He was so good and well seasoned and Cajun they even ate the couch. I'm so sorry my sweet sister. I promised you I looked after your little boy like that if anything was ever to happen to you. And they ate your little boy while I was out there obsessed with being a Tatai hunting grand kilot. Please forgive me. That's it. I'm gonna take this Tatai DNA to my partner Dr. Mouton at the monkey farm in New Iberia. He's the only scientist I still trust after them carpetbaggers so say lost my Pecan Island Dogman hair sample. Alright monkeys, ever since that debacle with my mercurochrome studies during the pandemic, we've been embroiled in some legal troubles, and these lawyers are expensive. Now we've tightened the bell and made as many cutbacks as possible, including letting go of the human staff and hiring new monkeys instead to experiment on each other, which I will write off as another research project. The point being, we need money, so we're going to have to find a way for you monkeys to generate some revenue during off hours at the facility. Now I've recently discovered this app called OnlyFans, where people at home will pay to watch primates in a voyeuristic capacity. If it isn't my old partner Lonnie Mayo, give me a sec Lonnie. Now run along and take this Loveworks bag and find some lingerie and toys and something cute for the live stream. Me Dr. Mouton, I ain't seen my little nephew for three days and when I went to his little room like that, there was all this slime I collected right here. And I was hoping if you could test that for Tatai DNA with your little spectrometographer, with your little spectropa with your little spectroparagraph shards you got like that. Well, Mr. Lonnie, that spectrometographograph is expensive to run, and I'm short staffed, and there's no real way I can confirm it's Tatai DNA, really, since we have no DNA sample of Tatai's to compare it to. However, we can rule out primates, including humans. Hey, take me to lunch at Duffy's and we can talk about it. Alright team, before we get started I want to thank Spencer for setting up this Zoom meeting with President Guillory. This technology is great. In the old days we had to meet the President in shady clandestine locations like the Les Pay Motel and the parking lot behind Cafe Cottage. This is untenable. That old tinfoil troublemaker is buying up all the commercial time slots at KLFU. He's even outbid the ambulance chasers and is putting up billboards all the way down Highway 90. And now his nephew is missing? Look, I know everyone's pretty much sick and tired of Nate Chassaw and his bullshit, but he is a local celebrity, and his being missing is another high-profile spotlight on the city parish that we can't afford. So I need to know right now if you Tatai's had anything to do with it. Sir, I assure you, no one from my team has anything to do with the disappearance of Nathan Chasson. Well, good. And there's no evidence linking you guys with Chasson or Mayu? Actually, Spencer. Actually, Spencer what? Actually, Spencer had a great idea. He did? 
I did? Yes, you did! Remember that ass-saving idea you came up with right before the Zoom meeting? Hmm. Oh yeah, aliens. Aliens, huh? Yeah, check it. I watch a lot of Ancient Aliens with Giorgio Thibodos and no cap. Those ufologists are amazing. They can, with zero evidence, rationalize any occurrence whatsoever to be the work of aliens. The city can invite them to come to town and investigate this alien abduction. These Lafayette rubes will fold under the pressure of their pseudo-scientific boomer babble and all pressure will be off of us to ties and LCG. That's actually not a bad idea. It's not? Because I just pulled it out of my ass. Speaking of asses, there's a saying about sunshine and dogs' asses. Well, that's a great idea. I'll reach out to the History Channel and invite the ancient alien guys out here to investigate Nate's disappearance and shift the blame to aliens. Then, if that old man continues with his media slander of LCG, I can create a task force to deal with the rise of these supernatural occurrences. When Lafayette loses interest in the whole affair and moves on to the next hip fad local social issue, gentrification, inequality, drag queen story time, Marcus Park, take your pick. But they will move on because their attention spans are minuscule. And when they do move on, we will frame the whole thing as a tenfold conspiracy hoax on Lani Mayu. Then we'll sue that old piece of human excrement for forcing the city to waste taxpayer dollars on the task force that I created. I don't mind not being able to afford gas and having to walk to the grocery store. It gives me a chance to burn off some of that sedimentary COVID weight. And it's better for the environment. I just wish milk wasn't $7 a gallon. I really don't mind the Biden economy. Giving up my dreams of being able to afford to buy a house or even live in one. Marry my girlfriend or (laughs) keep her as my girlfriend. It's a small price to pay for getting that gosh darn Trump out of there. Look this dude here. He got that white boy money. Look how green that money look in contrast to his pale ivory skin. That's the greenest white boy money I ever saw. Wait, did he just say something about Donald Trump? Let's roll. Hey, Edward Money Hands, hold up. Let me holla at you. Excuse me? You mean me? Yeah, you Forrest Gump. Look, my friend here said he heard you say something about Donald Trump. What, you some kind of Donald Trump supporter or what? Relevancy aside, let me make it simple for you, Jason Bateman. Did you vote Trump or Biden in the last election? I mean, Biden, of course. That's it. <laughs> Listen, shit prick. We used to be in the toughest motorcycle gang in the Deep South, Sons of Budanarchy, till Biden took office and put the truckers out of work, and we lost money on meth and whores, and then he made gas so expensive we can only afford to ride around in circles blowing black smoke out of our tailpipes for no more than three hours a day. And our club charter requires 30 hours a week. We had to disband our charter. We lost the club, man. Look, guys, I'm really sorry about your l- losing your club. We had to disband the club because we couldn't afford the fines for not being able to afford the fuel. You don't know how hard it is to run a legal business in today's economy. Look, guys, I'm not really a Biden supporter. I voted for what I thought was the lesser of two evils. Why did you hit me? Because I'm right-handed. Huh? What? My left hand is the lesser of two evils, but it still knocked your pale white ass silly. Look, political differences aside, we're gonna beat you up and take your money now. See, bruh, this is what I'm talking about. You're telling me that a bunch of illiterate swamp folk somehow were able to figure out the pneumatics, harmonics, and engineering required to construct a button accordion is simply not possible without the help of aliens. Well, maybe the Cajuns did construct the accordion themselves, but they were probably emulating some alien technology. I suspect some kind of anti-gravity device. Man, it's always anti-gravity with you, Dave. Geez, I'm telling you, it's a homage to the sound energy device the aliens used to harmonate with the Earth's ley lines so they could open up an interdimensional vortex. Aliens. Here we go with the damn vortexes again. Captain's Log, Episode 3, Act 1. We're making a little pass to Marcus Tree. A planet with beautiful lakes and streams and parks where I hope to teach these little Greek feet how a little something about fishing and cooking. We just need to make a little pass by the space gas station first. Tell me why we ain't got to the space gas station yet, Mr. Inguin or whatever your name is. It's wind, sir. No, not wind, Kuyan. Why? Like why we ain't there yet? 
The win is when you're gonna drive like you got a pair of pecans in your sack, boss. Sir, we have a power deficit issue. Sir, it seems like we don't have enough fuel to power all the main and auxiliary systems and travel at maximum velocity simultaneously. Mr. Mustache, switch rice cooker section to warm. Aye aye, sir. Reducing rice cooker section power to warm. Damn it, you had to turn off the radio two hours. Jamming. Anyway, increase power to the engines and get us to the space gas station. Maximum V, Mr. N. Gwyn, or whatever your little name is. It's win, sir. Win? Right the hell now, ball. I want to put my jams back on as soon as possible. What seems to be the trouble there, brother? Oh, I'll be all right, sir. Just a little mugging from the underemployed. Yeah, I hear the Biden economy is causing a spike in crime, which is a concern to the lower crust such as yourself. While my vast wealth and privilege protects me from most concerns, I can at least feel safe in the knowledge that I can defend myself. That's why I developed Flex Quan Do. Flex Quan Do? Is that some sort of strategy game? No, brother. Flex Quando is a martial art I developed to defend the strong from the weak. I thought martial arts were developed to protect oneself from a physically superior opponent. In many cases, that's true, but in my situation, I was the physically superior one. Look, brother, I can beat any man in a fair fight. Hell, I can beat three men at a time. But when you reach my level of fame and fortune, there's a lot of jealousy and resentment. The little people come after you. First, they taunt you, and when you respond to them by threatening to cripple their children, they stoop to slandering your name and organizing angry mobs and lawyers to attack you. It is for that reason I developed Flex Quan Do, the ultimate form of self-defense. Come inside. Look, I'll give you free lessons. <laughs> So Lonnie, like I was saying when we was at Duffy's, the only thing we can do with this alleged Tatar DNA you brought me is to use it to impregnate a monkey. Man, I always wanted to impregnate a monkey. Well, today, you'll get your chance. But like I was saying when we was at Duffy's, we'll artificially inseminate one of my new Iberian monkeys with this Tatar DNA. Then, when that baby's born, we can get some old women to come look at it and tell us who they think the daddy is. Either that, or we can take it to Maury. But, in any case, we can rule out aliens. Well, Alabaster, you really surprised me. No one has achieved a black belt in flex quando so quickly. So I've decided to enter you into Saturday's UMGPFC tournament. UMGPFC? Is that some new leftist political movement that I've been too busy training flex quando to blindly throw my support behind? No, it's a fighting organization, you see. Back in 2018, there were so many fights at the Mardi Gras parades that year that the State Athletic Commission sought to make it an organized sport called the Ultimate Mardi Gras Parade Fighting Championship. I got in early, and I now have a majority stake in the organization. We moved it out of the streets and into arenas, and it's become the premier fight sport in the state. You only have to win three fights to become the tournament champion, and if you do, I'll open up a Flex Quando Dojo in Youngsville, and I'll take you on as my partner sensei. Deal, brother? Captain's Log, Episode 3, Act 2. We are about to arrive at Marcus Tree, a quaint little leisure planet with lakes and streams and hills, where I'm fixing to teach the little crew how to fish, barbecue, and drink beer outdoors. Captain, we are within visual range of Moncus 3. Well, put it on screen, Sha. Oh, that's nice, yeah. T-Spec with your poorly animated New Iberia haircut. Scan that planet like that and see what they got to fish like that. Sir, the waters appear to be teeming with brim and succulent, 
and there seems to be another fish, but scans indicate it's not desirable for eating. Man, I'm the little expert here, so I'll be the judge of what's good eating and what's not. What is it like that? The closest thing in the database that you would recognize is your Terran alligator gar. May you had me at alligator gar. But it's the last thing I said. And it's also the only thing you said that I understood. Anyway, find us a spot to land on that little planet, close to the highest concentration of Sakale. Then we- Sir, Monka's three law states that we cannot land on the planet directly. The laws also prohibit us from maintaining orbit, as that would cause traffic congestion with all the coming and going visitors. So it's like Space Chick-fil-A? Precisely. Man, we can't land, and we can't cruise the orbit. How are we gonna park so we can get down and I can teach you all to fish? Sir, there are designated parking satellites where we can dock for a fee. Fee? And we just spent all our little space check on space diesel. Alright, since we came all this way, pull around to that space parking tower so we can park the ship and get down Mr. Whatever your little name is. It's win, sir. Win? Right the fuck now, bro. I wanna go fishing before the weather changes. <laughs> Louisiana, Alabaster LeBlanc, and for in the blue corner, with his tatons at a combined weight of 75 pounds, the Keyboard Warrior, Master of Keyboard Warrior Strong Style, Fat Jesus from New Iberia, Louisiana. <laughs> out, take it, read me in it, rule out, break it, I'm gonna make my dreams come true, doing it my way. Well if it ain't J.G. Wentworth, we're gonna take your money and beat your ass now. My J.G. Wentworth, beat his monkey ass down. We're gonna use your money to buy our gas now. My J.G. Wentworth. Beat his monkey ass down. Beat his monkey ass down. Bro, we beat thousands. We'll beat you too. One can of whip ass will open on you. They're gonna take his money and beat his ass now. But JG Wentworth. Beat his monkey ass down. <laughs> Dr. Mouton, bro, I want to thank you for allowing us to visit the new Iberian monkey farm to discuss our little disagreement on the cause of these strange occurrences locally. You know, there's an ancient astronaut theory about how the Anunnaki conducted similar experiments to the research you do here that led to the creation of the human race. I told you he was going to go down Anunnaki Avenue. I mean, really, you could show this guy an orange and he'd segue into the Anunnaki. Yeah, you are right. Here's your dollar. You know, this show is interested in science fiction and all, but this is an institute of science. Bro, here we go with the mainstream establishmental scientific community routine. May I can assure you Dr. Mouton is as far away from the mainstream scientific community as they come. Yes, I've been denounced by every university in the state. Okay, bro, I'm listening. You see, my preliminary analysis of the genetic material left at the site, it rules out human beings. 
in primates, and most other known forms of life on the planet. But the mitochondrial DNA matches with Earth's vertebrate group so that... You see, to ties them, they spit off the tree from the rest of us millions of years ago. Bruh, in any case, it's still aliens. My theory states that all life here was seeded by extraterrestrials. Or extra dimensionals who travel through the portal. And here we go with the portals. Bro, it can't be interdimensionals because the Anunnaki are clearly depicted traveling in saucer shapes. Oh, here we go with that damn Anunnaki bullshit. It's better than portals, you'll dry it up. I really don't think the aliens created life here. I think they might have altered our DNA with some kind of anti-gravity device. Hey Dave, why don't you get your aliens to use the anti-gravity device to hoist my nuts into your mouth, you fat prick? Guys, guys, y'all calm down. Calm your little asses down. Look, my evidence is indisputable. So why don't you guys give it up and go back home and I'll give y'all each a free month of our only monkey fans subscription. I got me a female baboon that can shoot ping pong balls out of her wahoo directly at the webcam. Aliens, bro. Sorry, Al, but I can't be associated with losers. More importantly, the sacred art of flex quanto can't be associated with losers. I don't understand. I thought you said that by mastering Flex Kwon Do, man could beat anyone. Yeah, that's right. Any one, any one man, or any number of weaker opponents. But you had to go pick a fight with a bunch of rough customers who were stronger than you and knew how to fight. I didn't mean to pick a fight. I, I got mugged. Save your excuses for your little nonprofit bosses at the community media center. A man of my means can't be bothered with excuses. I'm canceling your UMGPFC contract. Captain's Log, Episode Tree, Act Tree. After all the gas money we went through us to get to Moncus, we didn't have enough money left to pay for the parking. The citizens of Moncus are a proud people. Apparently they're most proud of their parking facilities. Mr. Mustache has reminded me about our hollow Nintendo entertainment system where we can have the computer generate a little sampulation of a canal to catch fish at. All right, y'all, y'all look see like that, and I'll show y'all the secret to catching garfish. Now, the key to fishing is patience, Komsa. So we'll wait here by the shallow and drink beer till that gar comes up to check out the bait. Ooh, here one comes now, Captain. All right, now here's the part that takes finesse. Hand me that phaser, T. Now, when he comes up to the shallow, I bust him up with this phaser, and we throw him in the boat. Then I'm going to show y'all how to barbecue. Benoit, that great idea your nephew came up with was the worst great idea ever. Now that old troublemaker has DNA and video that proves you guys are real. If the Tatars weren't a secret, I'd sue you to recoup the 10000 I spent on those ancient alien crackpots. Like when you sued the Antifa guy? Classic. Yeah, too bad that guy will never have more than two nickels to rub together. You guys are getting a little off topic here, and we're all kind of losing track of the real issue here. Spencer Seaman? <laughs> no! Gilroy can't sue his way out of this dilemma? No! The issue here isn't the DNA or the hair or the ancient alien couillons. This old fool has been making claims about Tatas for years, and no one has paid any attention to him yet, but now with his money to buy the local media and his celebrity nephew going missing? Listen guys, there's nothing that grabs more attention than a missing person case here in Lafayette. Soon everyone will be looking for Nate Chasson and eventually he'll pop up. Yeah, I spent this time cyber stalking his social media. My guess is he got a fat YouTube check and went on a bender. He probably went whoring too. Either that or some clout chaser or wackadoo pseudo celeb stalker finally got him. What we need to do is get out in front of this situation, Mr. Benoit, like we did back in 09. Yes, sir. All right, guys, here's the plan. We've got to find Nate Chasson before the media or the state police do. Then we'll kill him and stash the body in other incriminating evidence, framing that old feet putain Lani Mayu. Once he is discredited once again and imprisoned for murdering his nephew, no one will care about this Tatai nonsense. 